What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, the last video did pretty good. People enjoyed hearing the Q&A. So I think I'm going to continue that for this video and go through a couple more. I have so many saved up actually. So I'm going to go down the list and just try to get through those. There was a question of how can you get sponsored by Babeless Pro or any brand in general. Uh, this is something that you got to think about when you are creating content is that first, my biggest advice is that you are making content for products that you also believe in. Maybe not so much doing it because you think there's a job opportunity, but I think the marriage between the brand and the person has to make sense. And I feel like there's a lot more growth and job and opportunities that happen if it's within something that you actually love to use. Whether they promote you or not, that is usually a good sign. So you want to think about those things. And then also just giving people or companies in general that you have something that you can share that is of value to them. So when it comes to brands, they're obviously looking for collaboration in exposure or talent using their products, right? For example, Babeless Pro. They are a clipper company, right? And what I, and I obviously cut hair. So a lot of the videos that I used to make I mean, I still make them, but a lot of the videos that I would make that caught their attention was me being able to advertise different types of tools and how they were helping my life. So when the opportunity came and I could collaborate with them, it made sense because it was already in line with what I was doing. And also to get sponsored, your best bet is to have a really, I'm not saying you need 50 to 100,000 followers, but your exposure and your social media platforms do help. It's not always the case, so it's not the only thing that matters. I think a lot of times too, people are looking for different personalities. People who are have like a genuine audience, have a connection to their audience. That's another thing that people look for is your engagement. How you talk to people on your page, how you create content, what your message is uh, putting out. Like is it positive, is it negative? How you talk. Is it too hood or is it something that fits a certain brand? It just depends on what you're actually trying to lock yourself into. But as far as barbering, that's mainly the area that I know best because I've gotten accepted and also I've heard from the business side of what they're also looking for. Another thing too is just people that are always growing, always staying connected, always getting creative. Um, they have their own personality online. They represent something, they have something of value to share with people that people want to listen to. That is another thing. Uh, you know, outside of the skill, the skill set is definitely an important factor as well because you got to be able to show how you can use something effectively and also have a nice end result. So your skill sets do matter as well. But you mix that in with some personality, with some content. Uh, you know, there's so many things that we can use now. There's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's Snapchat, there's Facebook, there's YouTube. There's so many different platforms. And, you know, when I first started out, I actually only used Instagram first because that was my online portfolio of how I can promote my haircuts to new clients. From there, it branched into, I want to say Snapchat. You know, everyone started using the Snapchat filters and messing around with that. That was really cool because a little bit more personal before Instagram felt like super personal. Um, then it moved into, you know, when it comes to like new platforms, I think I'm always willing to try it at least once. And that is my way of staying connected to everything that's going on. It's like, I'm trying to just stay as relevant as possible in all of these areas. It's a lot of work, like no doubt about that. I am stressed out all the time thinking about how I'm going to be able to keep up with all these different platforms by myself. But the thing is, is that it seems really unreal in the beginning, but once you actually go through it and it becomes almost like it's part of your life, it starts to get less stressful and it just becomes like your regular, it's, it's almost like brushing your teeth every day. It becomes that feeling to where it's just part of you. I've had people ask me like, how do you keep up with all these different platforms? And as much as tough as it is, I actually enjoy it. And I think that's also the crucial thing about like social media and just being able to like, you know, create without stress is that I literally create just to have fun with it. And also at the same time, I'm always feeling like I'm learning something new. So it never feels like a loss. It doesn't feel wasted. It doesn't feel like, where is this going to end? Where is this going to take me somewhere? And then it's not going to work out. Not really, because all of this is going straight back into my brand. This is this is the investment that I'm putting into myself in the content 
in the type of content I'm creating. I'm also trying to think about the future, like, okay, if I make a content around this piece, could that actually put me in position to get an ambassadorship with a technology company, like a camera company, like Sony or something like that? Sony, Nike, you just kind of think about the brands that you currently use all the time and how you can make content out of that. And honestly, you really can if you think about just like different ways of uh, being creative and using one piece of content. I, I, I pull this from Gary Vee's video all the time. You should be able to take one event and transfer that into like 50 pieces of content. I haven't fully mastered what he means by that, but I'm starting to understand that you can make multiple types of creative videos or content or whatever you want to use it out of one event because sometimes we, we overanalyze and we think about you know what if it doesn't come out right what if I do this and it and it's and it's not and it's not gonna work or whatever the thing is you will not know until you actually do it and once you do it and you make a mistake it's almost like okay I, now I know don't go that route anymore now I can shift directions and try a different approach and this is the only way you actually understand it and and figure out what type of content is going to work for you. You're not going to know by wondering if this is going to be it or not. I am guessing till this day, everything that I put out, I'm like, maybe it'll hit, maybe it won't, but it doesn't matter because I enjoyed making this content. So you got to just pull the results out a little bit and create genuinely because you want to. And I promise you when you start functioning at that kind of like intention behind the things that you create, the results are tremendous. Like when I think about social media, right? Social media rubs certain people the wrong way. It's a waste of time because they're too busy. But honestly, when you can learn how to promote yourself online, the exposure and how far those, op those opportunities can take you is beyond what you could even think of would happen. I would not be traveling Cutting hair, like it's just not even a realistic thing that people would think about when you think about barbering. I wouldn't be able to do all those things if I didn't gain exposure from connecting with people across the world through social media, through different platforms, through, you know, even if it's not in direct contact with the person that I'm trying to reach, it could connect to somebody that's connected to them and then in conversation, they bring your name up because they saw a video. That's how it spreads sometimes and that's how a lot of opportunities are formed. So that's pretty much just the social media aspect of it and just creating because you want to. If you make it less about results and you make it more about you learning, you doing this so many times so you can get better at a certain type of editing, that's where you're going to get your gain and then you're going to see a really organic flow come back into the things that you want and if that is to get more followers if that is to just get more exposure in general or even likes comments whatever it is your goal is they're not bad things to want it's just people want to make you feel bad for thinking that way but it's not a bad thing to want to gain exposure because for me exposure equals opportunities it leads to more it leads to referrals for different things like I do hair and just in this last year, just by association and just trying little things, like I started video editing just for hair. From there, I started working with the lab and doing dance videos, but not even like crazy dance videos. I was just the behind the scenes person just capturing the show. And through that, I was just starting to shoot like different, different recap videos, storytelling of a journey from beginning to end. And that was more so of a passion project that I was just testing out through that just continuing to do it it led me to work with sierra it led me to work with usher it led me to be able to film j-lo and a-rod and there's probably more coming so you just really don't know where it could take you but as long as you're continuing to do stuff that you actually like it takes you to this like weird tunnel where similar opportunities come into your path and you're able to continue doing what you love but now with different people, different places and you just don't really know how that's going to take you. So my biggest advice when you guys are going into wanting to become sponsored, I know this took a completely different route and I dug a little deeper than what the question was but honestly guys, I truly can't stress it enough to just put yourself out there, share your story even if you don't know what to talk about if you just share bits and pieces of things that you've already been through, your experiences, 
you're gonna start to understand what kind of audience you're attracting because then you can read the the you can read your audience better by seeing what's relatable to them. And this is how I've built like my organic following is being able to share my story and seeing what is connecting to people, and then I'm able to mix that together and find what are the core things that people want to hear more about that I've gone through, and I share that. And the more I share that, I've strengthened certain audiences. So whether it's in education, you know, I have my hair people. Then it comes to shoes, I got my shoe people. When it comes to tattoos, I got my tattoo people. So you got to think about different parts of your life and how you can share and create content stories on those pieces. Let those things kind of lead you to the next place. You don't have to always know where you're going to end up, but what is the saying is that you only have to know how to take that first step, right? So take that step, create the content, and let it do its thing, and you figure it out as you go. I, I mean, I don't mean like figure out as you go on every single level, but putting in the effort is always going to take you one step closer to figuring out if you need to change directions with it or you continue going down that road. Um, what words of motivation would you give to new barbers trying to find their way in this industry? Uh, the best thing that I can tell you guys that are coming into this industry brand new is that you really focus on your skill sets. Build that first. Learn everything that you need to. Be open-minded. There's so many different techniques. There's so many different tools. There's so many different everything. Learn everything that you can. And by the time that you go through all of that, you're going to be able to feel out what is actually your style of cutting or what type of clientele you're going to attract. I would take, I open myself up to everything to realize, okay, I don't want to be that barber that cuts fast. Okay, I actually don't really do a lot of traditional haircuts. I do a lot of modern creative haircuts, you know, so I wouldn't have been able to figure those things out unless I went through it and saw what kind of things were gravitating towards me. But I've always been able to kind of like try each style to find the one that suits me. And you'll figure it out as you go. And also too, when you are new, like don't worry about, you know, catching up to people that you're already seeing online. Like you gotta just allow yourself to grow at your own pace. Everyone is going to learn at different speeds. They're exposed to different things. You're in different situations than people that you're seeing online. Just allow yourself to just be where you're at. If you want faster growth, because that's usually what people want the most, is that the only way those things will change is you just working hard as hell. Like you gotta, you gotta outwork people in your area. That would be your best way of growing because the results come to those who are putting in the most work. So if you can do that out of everybody in your city, I think you'll start to see change fast. When and how did you understand that you wanted to be a barber? Uh, this is a great question. I actually did not know until I actually got into the industry. Uh, it was about my second year. The first year I was in a salon. I tried, I tested that out. It was okay. I just wasn't really connecting to maybe the processing and the different type of things that you can do in a salon. It just wasn't connecting for me. So by the time that I got into a barbershop, I think it just instantly clicked for me because it was something that was so fun. I think there was just the fast pace about doing short hair and seeing them come back in quickly like within a week or two at the time it was like a fast-paced barbershop that I was in it made me feel challenged but also enjoying that challenge to where I'm like okay I want to just keep cutting because this is like addicting to feel like I have something to work towards because I mean when you're learning how to do fades and you see your transition to what you what you've seen online of what they're supposed to look like visually you can see okay I need more work to get to this point. So it was just something that I think held my attention a lot better than when I was in a salon. And so I, I stayed in it. And the reason why I enjoyed it so much was because the the reaction from the clients, that was one of the main things that really held me in the barbershop is that I was I felt like I could I could understand a client's needs on top of my own personal recommendations for things that I've seen that I feel like would fit certain people and when you put those things together you see how people literally come to life when you give them the best cut and they feel great they walk in the shop you know maybe a little bummed out they had a rough day but when they leave that shop and they see their haircut and they're feeling like a brand new person that's 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 a feeling that I look forward to every time I cut a new person's hair or the same person I want that same feeling every single time
and through that just doing you know the day-to-day -day of being a, being in a barbershop and taking care of customers it just I built a passion for it you know I think when you go into something passion isn't something that can just fall into your lap and you're like okay this is the passion that I was looking for passion is something you create by doing so much like I didn't know I had a passion for cutting hair until I was doing it so much that it became a part of my life that I felt like I couldn't stop doing my passion was to help people feel good. And once I figured that out, it made me want to keep going. It made me want to keep elevating and growing in different ways because the more I could grow in education and learning different things, that made each of those appointments even better. Every single slot was better because they know that I was out here and there and there and there learning all these new different things to bring them back the best recommendations I can possible for them. Barbering, of course, led me to education, but that's a whole nother different story. How do you remain strong, empowered, and motivated if your family and friends disapprove? This is a really tough question that I get a lot. I know a lot of people struggle with this question, and the answer is, it's your life. You have to make sure that everything that you do is aligned with what you want to do, because the last thing you want to do, and I've, I know a lot of people that have gone through this, is that you follow a route that isn't true to who you are, a couple years down the road, you figure out you're fighting something that wasn't really meant for you to begin with, but you were doing it for somebody else, maybe for your parents, maybe for your spouse or whoever, and then you become unhappy. Even if you love something and you weren't doing good at it, if you truly love something, it would push you through even the worst times in that part of that journey. And I think this is why they say you got to find what you love, because that is the only way for you to stick through something even at its even at its lowest points because when you do anything in life everything is going up and down but the lows are going to be really tough if it's something you actually don't care about that's why they say if you love it you're able to at least hang on a little tighter because you love spending your time on it and i believe those moments are the ones that really define where you are going next I mean, if you guys have followed me for a while before, you guys know I've, I've kind of spoke about it a little bit, is that my family didn't support it. They actually did not support it at all, but you know, I gotta do it for me, not for them. And I just stuck with that, and it's crazy to believe, but 10, 10 11 years passed by at now, what feels like a blink of an eye, because I just kept to my own route, and I said, no, this is something I wanna try and figure it out. And, uh, you know, we disconnected for a little bit, but that's the, that's the price you got to pay sometimes to follow your own dreams, to follow your own heart, to follow your own path into what you want to do. The proudest moment of my career so far. There's a couple, but uh, the first one is being part of the Pivot Point Barbering Education System. That one was really huge for me. When I went to school, we had Pivot Point for Cosmetology. Barbering never existed within the pivot point system. So one of the biggest accomplishments that I have had was being part of that first edition that I believe lasts for about five years. And we did this maybe two years ago or so. Um, but being one of three barbers, I wanna say, that was able to help them write this barbering education platform. If you guys did take the pivot point course, in the last couple years, you probably have seen me in the books kind of explaining three different cuts. Uh, so that was something I really feel appreciative. That was like a full circle moment for me because I learned from that system myself. Uh, so that would be the, that would probably be the highest thing. Uh, second thing for me, um, I think was, you know, as cheesy as it is, you know, I didn't do a lot of barber battles. I did try in the beginning. Um, I didn't get... I think at one one battle, I might have gotten second place for a side part comb over women's category. Um, but aside from competitive types of battles, uh, another proud moment for me was industry awards, getting recognized for just my work. It wasn't really a competition that I signed up for. It was more so like you were selected among the rest. And the first one that really got me kind of like super inspired was 2017 at BarberCon in New York. I was awarded Female Barber of the Year. And when I got that award, I can't even forget it because I was, we were in this like super dark nightclub in New York. 
there was so many people on the floor you couldn't even see the ground also like two or three levels up more of people in all the balconies it was mainly guys for sure at least like 80 percent and when i got that award i literally choked up and kind of teared up because i was just like to me it was just a, it was just a moment of relief of like holy shit i've been working so hard since 2011 up until 2017 to get recognized by literally people in the industry and it was such a critical moment in my journey that it's something I still remember to this day because that feeling just was so overwhelming for me to you know I, I work really hard and I never asked for people to give me feedback you know I was so scared of the the critiques I would just work and I would just work and I would just work and then if I get recognized, it was kind of like a bonus. You know, it wasn't something I looked forward to. So when that happened, I was literally caught off guard. And when they gave it to me, I literally choked. And I remember it got quiet. And then the people on the floor just started clapping. They started clapping. All the levels started clapping. The energy and support in that moment was so real. I felt the waves throughout the entire building under my feet. And they were just cheering me on because they knew I was just speechless at that moment. And I, I know, I don't even know who was there that night, but it was literally a very pivotal moment for me of feeling like I'm on the right path and there's more that I can take from this and continue going down that road. And then third, just being able to do education. I think, uh, I just love being able to be a positive light for people. Uh, I'm hoping that every time I share my story and that every time I am able to meet people on the road is that I'm able to kind of maybe help to inspire a thought in people's minds that you know, you're very capable of doing all the things that you ever want to do. Success follows you wherever you go. So what failures have you had to overcome to be in this position? Um, success follows you wherever you go. I, I, I am blessed and thankful for that. But at the same time, I think as you move through each phase, it does come with a set of challenges that maybe are just not as announced as some of the highs. But I mean, from the beginning, you know, bad haircuts, bad Yelp reviews, dealing with coworkers that don't support me, dealing with you know, friends that don't support me. The other failures that I've had is not knowing how to market myself when I was moving from Orange County to LA. I had to start all over again and that was a really humbling experience for me. Another failure that I had to deal with was completely choking on my first presentation at a beauty school. I buckled up and I just felt like I was literally on the verge of tears. I was super sweaty and hot it was uh, public speaking was a huge fear of mine from the beginning like from elementary school up until when i joined the babeless company it had been a tremendous fear 